and welcome everyone. We're spending some time here with the Ankahumas, their cubs, and one of the Birmingham boys. My name is Ali. Uh, nice to meet you all. Uh, and I'm here doing my very first interview drive with you guys. So I am a bit nervous at the moment. <laughs> so you can probably notice it by the shaking of my voice. Do not tell Brent because he will tease me nonstop. Anyway, he decided to be a gentleman and a good friend. And he allowed me to come here and have a look at this wonderful Cubs in the Sprite. Who this morning, I believe, they managed to knock down a fully grown buffalo. So they're all now just lying in the shade. It is quite hot this afternoon. Doesn't feel like winter is here anymore. And they're busy now all resting in the shade. As you can see, you can only just feel a bit sorry for them. They are very well fed, but they're all busy panting. They're breathing very, very quickly. And this is because they are very, very hot, despite the fact that they are in the shade. So if you see the stomach of all the females, even that one that's just busy feeding the cubs, she's also breathing very, very quickly. So while we've been here, they've been moving around, going onto areas where the sand is a bit cooler, just in an attempt to wait for the sun go down to then possibly go and feed on the, on the buffalo again. It would seem by my count that uh, all eight cubs are around here. This is only the second time that I've actually managed to see them and it's good to see that they're all still doing very well and all still around. I do think they are the prettiest lion cubs I've seen in a very long time. Um, I have only seen the Styx cubs recently but this ones look by far uh, better fed and very fluffy and very cute. I mean look at those tiny little faces. Seems like the little cubs are been getting up and trying to suckle from different females at the same time. So three of them, oh well maybe now just two of them are busy feeding and the rest of them are either playing with little twigs or also just trying to cool down and just not be as hot. It does seem like the cuddles are a bit too much in this weather. Um, some of you are asking about my accent. It is a very big combination of things. So I am originally from South America, where we learn the American English, where we learn English with the American accent. However, I've been living in South Africa for about five and a half years now. So I've also picked up a bit of the accent. So I don't know, it's a bit of a combination. So you guys can tell me what do I sound like because in my head, it's all in English and I am a native Spanish speaker. So it's all very new to me. Sounds very different in my head. <laughs> so that is where I'm from. Came all the way just to be able to appreciate things like the one that we're viewing at the moment and just enjoy the general beauty that Africa has to offer. Hi Carrie, you're asking how I know Brent. Well, I also work in the Sabi Sand. I work in the northern area and I met Brent and Jamie and all of the Wild Earth uh, team just a few months ago. Well, almost a year now actually, when I first started working in this area. So we became very good friends. Me and Jamie actually joke around that my partner Tristan and Brent are each other's boyfriends because they have a bit of a bromance going on. <laughs> So we obviously then became very good friends, being very interested in the wildlife, all of us being guides and just enjoying this general thing. So yeah, that's how I met him just about a year ago and we've been friends since. <laughs> Seems like the little ones at the back are a bit more active and just enjoying chewing. It would seem like a little piece of branch or a piece of twig that they had earlier on maybe they're just giving up on their little get oh no just as you say there's always somebody that's got to prove you wrong i think he's just not 
Yeah, he is a bit more energetic. I don't think he wants to take the general nap as the rest of the pride. But they keep moving around going on and off. Um, when we first arrived, like I said, one of the females was actually busy chasing the vultures that are coming down on the carcass because they've been spotting it. But I think she just sprinted there and then came running straight back to the shade because it's still a bit too hot to be feeding on the buffalo or just to be in the sun in general, especially for the lions. The little ones have been... Okay, seems like we're gonna go back to Brent, who's got something else on his side, so we're gonna see what he's got. Hello again. Here we are with two of the females that have raised their heads, and it seems like they're looking at the vultures flying up in the sky. It is a bit too hot however for them to even try and move around so I think this is as much attention as the vultures are going to receive for now. But I just wanted to point out a very cute factor that I noticed while we've been sitting here. I don't know if you can see that cub at the back sleeping with its feet on top of its sibling in a very comfortable way and then if you look at the male at the Birmingham male he's also got his feet on top of the female. So it makes you wonder if really they pick up these things from their parents <laughs> from a very small age. Or if the one that is leaping down, because I cannot distinguish from here, is a young little male that's maybe using one of his female sisters or little cousins just as another post. Yeah, what we can see here also the female, he's just busy looking around. It seems like there is something that has got her attention. And she's just keeping an eye out because they'll be very protective of their kills and they won't allow any of the other predators around to come in. Not even the scavengers like the vultures. It seems, however, that we're going to have a bit of a surprise also joining us here on the side. One of the other males has decided now to move. He was sleeping far away from the rest of the crowd, but he is now finally gotten up and made his way to the rest of the pride. <laughs> and in the process got a bit tangled with a bunch of branches on the ground. Oh, and he's being very polite and then hopefully that's not what he thinks of us. <laughs> Alrighty, well I can let you guys know that um, the carnivore dung, or poo if you want to call it, from the lions is in my opinion the stinkiest one of them all. So yeah, especially when they've been eating a lot of meat that has been under the sun, like that buffalo over there, it doesn't, it doesn't leave a nice aroma out in the bush. All right. Lucy from Southwest Indiana is asking me what is my favorite animal. I don't have just one and that is a bit of a problem. My ultimate favorite animal are rhinos just because I am very biased because I worked in a rehabilitation center with rhinos and they gave me a tiny baby rhino to look after so after that I don't think anything else can really compete. But lions are my second favorites. I mean, look at them, these beautiful males with their big, nice manes and those beautiful colored eyes and then the tiny little cubs. I just find them fascinating and they are such incredibly strong animals. They by far deserve everyone's respect. Thank you, Jamie Patterson, for the yay. <laughs> you promised you weren't going to watch the drive, but it's fine. As long as the lions are around, everything shall be fine. <laughs> Funny enough, the first or the only drive that Jamie and I have ever shared was watching the Enkahuma lions. She is the one that brought me to see the tiny little cubs not too long ago, and it's the first time that I had ever seen them. So, yay! Thanks, Jamie. <laughs> it all worked out in the end. Oh, well, hello. Seems like there is something lurking around. 
wonder if maybe she's seen one of the vultures that we can't see from here. And she's going to investigate just to make sure what's happening. Ooh, there goes the male as well. And you can see a vulture there, but I think they are a bit too full and maybe a bit too hot to run to the kill. Or maybe the male has got different intentions. Hmm. All right. I'm just gonna hang on a second and see and see what they do before we move around the vehicle and possibly disturb the other ones that are still sleeping here. It is funny, it it's, almost looks like this male is looking to mate with her or maybe even preventing her from getting to the kill. He is busy now just marking and just covering, kicking it back with his back legs. Hi Sharon, you want to know how I or what got me started into my safari journey. I don't really know if I can be very honest with you. I came to South Africa uh, initially just because I wanted to volunteer for a little while. I wanted to come to Africa and see the wildlife and experience, uh, experiencing being close to them because I always had this fascination for Africa. I have no idea why. And then when I got here and started working in the Wildlife Rehabilitation Center, I started hearing about all the different opportunities and all the different things that you can do or the jobs that you can do to work close to the wildlife. And one of them was obviously becoming a safari guide. And to me, it just seemed like the perfect thing because I had dealt with animals, wild animals in captivity and the process to rehabilitate them and put them back in the wild. So I knew everything about the captivity. Well, not everything, but I knew a bit about the captivity and I wanted to see those same animals doing what they're actually supposed to be doing and in their environment that they're supposed to be being in. So that's pretty much what got me into it. Seems like the lions over there are having a bit of a interesting fight. I think the male was actually preventing the female from getting to the kill and she growled a bit at him. Even I think maybe there was a paw flick and he wasn't too impressed about it. Hmm. Maybe he's just being a greedy old boy and he wants to keep all that buffalo for himself. All right, while we try to figure out what uh, the boy wants with this particular girl, we'll link back to Brent and see what he's got on that, his side. Well, it seems like the birds have come out to play. We are looking here at a um, hooded vulture. That's probably the reason why two of these lionesses were looking up early on when we were watching them. Uh, often they will come around and they've got very good eyesight and I'm sure while it was flying looking around for food it spotted the carcass and it's just come down to try and feed off the little pieces. However, because the lions are around and they will chase them then he has realized that the safest spot to be is actually up on the tree where the lions won't really try to get him. So the male and the female that started walking on earlier are now sitting there in a tiny little stretch of shadow while they wait for their next move. It was very interesting behavior, oh bless you, from the male because we I was just talking to Dave who's on camera today with me and he also agrees that it seemed a bit funny like he was actually trying to prevent her from going to the kill. I might be mistaken but it's always worth exploring another option as she didn't try approach the kill again. They are a bit more alert now, so it's, it's interesting to see the dynamics that happen on a kill. <laughs> 
Sorry, I couldn't catch the name, uh, Kirsty, in final control, but one of the questions came through of how yard bird you're asking how they manage to get the red stains off their face so lions are very clean animals a lot of the times they will use their tongue as a brush to try and get rid of all the blood all around their faces so they'll also start licking their paws and their arms and then they'll stroke their paws just like a normal house cat does against their face just to try and remove all the little pieces of meat, of blood, all the dirt, anything that might be around there. But also what they do that is very unique with lions and has a, a multiple purposes is the fact that they will then go and aloe groom. And by this, I mean that they will go and start licking each other and trying to help each other up, keep clean, and then just in general, maintain a better hygienic condition. So normally they'll go, they'll feed, and then once they're done, that's when you see them licking their paws, scratching their faces and everything else. It seems like the female has one still there. The other female, just, I don't know if you can just see it from there. So we had two that came around and started moving uh, while the male and the female were moving around here just to get a bit closer to the kill, which is just to the right of this female. But she is still keeping her head up, just keeping an eye out on that vulture, making sure he doesn't try too much. Hopefully, as the sun goes down and as the temperature cools down, then these ones over here will eventually <laughs> make their way onto the kill. But it doesn't seem like it's going to happen for now, because <laughs> they're all back on the ground. Hi, Deborah from Ohio. You want to know what happened to the little baby rhino that I was looking after. His name uh, was Bobby, and unfortunately it died. It is a very sad and tragic story. I know I cried a lot, like bawling my eyes out when this happened. Um, but baby rhinos are very susceptible to ulcers, stomach ulcers. They need a very particular milk formula and uh, they get stressed very easily. So they need to be accompanied all the time. And unfortunately it happened so that Bobby didn't survive. It was horrible. I was crushed, but then also it just gave me a better appreciation for all of the ones that are still alive. So whenever I see a tiny baby rhino, I can't help but make the rhino noises that they make because for such a big animal, they make very, very high pitched noises. And you know, my heart just goes all warm and fuzzy inside when I see them. So yeah, not a happy ending, but it worked out in the end. <laughs> we'll see. Seems like these guys over here are very settled in all of their positions. The cubs are all lying down, the females lying down, and then the vulture just trying its luck up there. We'll see. I think he is also playing a game with the lions. Every now and again you'll see he turns his head around, just keeping an eye out on them, seeing if he can maybe try to wangle his way down, go and have a bite, and then hopefully go back up onto the tree before the lions decide that they're not as hot as they are now, and then they'll come chasing him. Oh, okay. So it's been a day of the back. <laughs> Seems like he has been successful at obtaining some pieces of the meat. <laughs> Turning around, facing the lioness. I think he's assessing if he can go down. Hi, Helena from Sweden. You would like to know normally how many lions or lionesses there are in a group. There is no right answer for this. It depends very much on the area that they are in. But I would say that the basic structure for a pride is a female or two females together with their cubs. 
I have seen a variety of prides that have gone from one female and two cubs that actually weren't her cubs, just in the southern part of the Sabi Sand. She's also known as the Charleston female. And I've seen prides of lions of over 20, 22 lions at a time. So you've got quite a big range. Normally what would happen though, if the pride is very big, so if it's 10, 15, 20 lions, they will split up at a time just to be able to get hold of the different resources because you can imagine if it's a very big pride it is very hard to find enough food all the time for them to to feed on so at the moment here we've got the five lionesses the yankahumas and then we've got two males the two birmingham boys which gives us a total of six uh fully grown lions sorry eight no six and uh, then we've got uh, a bunch of cubs, the eight cubs. So they've managed to bring down this buffalo last night. Uh, it seems like they haven't eaten that much of it yet, but I doubt that they'll be here for more than a day or two. Especially if they leave this carcass here out in the sun, normally they will try to drag it onto an area where the meat won't rot as fast as it will. But even sometimes if the meat is very rotten and smelling, smelling very bad, they will still eat it. All right, while we stay here with this guy, see if anything else happens, if any other heads get up, we'll go back to Brent, see what he's got on his side. Just another peaceful day in Africa. These cubs, surrounded by their mothers and two of the males, they have really very little to worry about other than just passing the heat of the day. Oop, seems like one of them has got their head up. I wonder, maybe it's a bit of a fly that's bothering him, maybe, oh, nice big yawn and those big teeth. Alrighty, well, it seems like somebody's up, just like a cat, you see how similar is that to a house cat? Probably just about the same size. <laughs> but just a bit naughtier than the rest of them. I think he is or she. It's either trying to look for a different spot where there isn't so much sun and possibly while doing that just trying to see if anybody else is awake trying to play. Ah, well hello. Seems like the flies have been quite irritating. I have counted over 20 of them around. I don't know if you can see them on the screen on its belly but they're all flying around there and they're becoming a bit annoying for all this poor male. So every now and again, he just flicks his tail, puts his head up, and then, you know, has a very angry look at a tiny little creature that is making its life a bit more difficult. But somebody's got to give some trouble to the king of the jungle, don't they? <laughs> See, there it goes with the flick of the tail, trying to get rid of all of them. And he has got a very scarred face. I had never seen them so up close. I think I have only seen the Birmingham boys once before and they were pretty much doing the same that they're doing now as you or as some of you may know lions tend to sleep quite a bit um, throughout the day and now that we're heading into summer and the days are starting to get a lot hotter than what they used to be well they're going to be spending more and more time sleeping just to try and not overheat and just past the heat of the day and they'll go hunting and patrolling and marking their territory as they move around. Some of the feet have moved a bit more. Hi, Tony from Pennsylvania. You would like to know what other countries' animals I would like to go and visit. The list is quite long, unfortunately. I don't know if I'll have enough time or money in my lifetime to go there. But I think the top of my list, and it depends on which side of the world I end up going to, are polar bears. Just especially now in this fantastic heat that we're having. <laughs> I'm really, really looking forward to one day just being able to go see the polar bears and the arctic foxes and the seals and everything else up there. I do terribly bad in the cold weather. I suffer greatly because I come from the Caribbean, so I am used to this heat. But uh, those are ones that I would like to see. 
I would like to go back to my country and see more jaguars because I've only saw once running and it was a very fleeting and passing moment and I would like to spend some quality time with them as I've done with some of the leopards around here. Tigers definitely for sure in India and then just uh, the great one-horned rhino in Nepal that is also at the top of the list. And then I could go on for, for a long time, but I think those are the ones that in the next 10 years or so, I hope I'll be able to see. But for now, I'm pretty happy with the lions as well. I mean, look at those tiny, cute little faces. I must say, it is quite the achievement that there, some of the cubs are still cuddling around and just sleeping on top of one another. Just imagine having this big fur coat and that's why you're in the shade and then on top of that there comes somebody which is also like an additional gigantic blanket that wants to come and lay on top of you. Yeah, that is a real proof of love right there. All of them panting. All right, while well, these little ones carry on sleeping, let's just uh, go back to Brent and see what he's got over there. It seems like the weight paid off and maybe one, two, three, four of the cubs are now busy feeding on the carcass. And one of them is slowly going back to mom. <laughs> So these tiny little ones, they will still, uh, we saw them earlier, they were still suckling, still getting milk from their mothers. But when they're about maybe two or three months old, then they also be, uh, get introduced to meat because now they need to grow a lot quicker and a lot stronger. So they need to supplement their diet, which is what they're doing now to eventually be weaned off the milk. They won't have any more milk when they're maybe about six, eight months old and they'll just eat meat. And by the eagerness that they're feeding with, I don't really think it's a problem for them. They seem pretty excited. <laughs> All right, so you can see from here that they've just eaten the back part of the buffalo. So that thing in the middle there, that is the stomach content of the buffalo. They've dragged it out. And probably what the males did was feed on the softer parts first. So they will go and feed on the organs that are a bit softer than the meat that's attached to the bones or the skin and so on. So they will normally start with what's soft, the rump, the back, the cheeks, and then they'll carry on. Oh, look at them fighting. Such a bad temper for such a little creature. You see, from a very young age, they learn that they need to fight for their food. Even if they are social cats, when it comes to food, they don't like sharing. And I am sure you can hear all the little ones just growling at each other because they all want to get onto that same part and feed off of it. What is interesting is this is the miniature version of exactly of how they're going to be. Oh, look at that. I must say, this is the most fierce battle I've ever seen between cubs for food. They are behaving exactly like big male lions would do or adult lionesses, just fighting for their food and trying to ward each other off from that particular piece of meat that they're eating. It is incredible and kind of funny sometimes. You see those two that are busy fighting. They are so adamant that they both want to feed from that spot. Yet, there is a whole buffalo to share. <laughs> but I, can't, I, can't, I guess it's a case of they just really want that one piece that its sibling is having because it, that's the tasty one. 
we're not too different in between species, I don't think. I think this female is just getting a bit annoyed by that branch there and she's tried to pull a few times so maybe what they want to do is actually move or expose a bit more of other parts of the buffalo to be able to feed on other parts. Let's see if she helps them around. What if she's going to be the big boss and tell them off? Lots of vocalization by the cubs, they're making a lot of noises, probably just trying to get all the females to move around or just just showing that they're not happy about the situation. Ah, here's a little troublemaker. We're gonna let this little guys here settle their dispute and see who wins but in the meantime let's go back to Brent and see what he can show us. James you were asking earlier if the sunsets in South Africa are the prettiest ones or actually I think you were telling me that and by the looks of this I think you are absolutely right. This is an incredible sunset with Africa's biggest cats just putting on a show for us. The cubs eating, fighting with each other. Uh, one of the females there just keeping an eye out, making sure that they don't get a bit too hectic. It's, uh, yes, I think the sunset just won by like a thousand brownie points, no doubt. and they come and they feed and they fight a little bit just to remind each other that they're there and then off they go. And it did seem a bit earlier on that the female wanted to come and feed but maybe she's just letting her motherly instinct kick in. She does seem to be very full herself. So she's just probably just letting the cubs have a bit of a feed before she goes and, and um, has a bit herself. four cubs feeding but I'm pretty sure they're all around here then we've got one of the cheeky ones from the back which I think was the one fighting earlier on just approaching let's see if he tries to go in and tries to feed a bit more hmm. oh, look at that wind the wind is picking up here quite a bit as you can see now with all the branches of the trees moving and all the dust flying around. I do wonder if this is going to bring the next cold, hopefully the last cold front of the season. Do you see the wind normally makes animals very nervous. The three lionesses have got their heads up now just smelling around seeing what's happening. As obviously the wind can mask the sound and the smell of any other approaching animals. Oh she's calling. It's hard to hear. There's a little brave one walking away. Gracie, age 9, wants to know why lion cubs fight with their moms for food. I would say that they, it's not a particular thing against their moms. Lions, in general, just fight for food. Um, they are fighting with each other. Um, I, they're not fighting.
and starts feeding herself. But uh, I, having said this, I have seen them before where the mothers just come in and then just tell the cubs that they've had enough and then they get in and then they start feeding. <gasps> Look at that tiny cute little face. You see the wind makes them also a bit nervous so they probably won't go too far away from the adults just to keep safe. Talking about that, there's a female that she's got now, got her head right in there, probably looking for more meat. Because they haven't taken the skin of this buffalo yet. Oh, there she is. Maybe she's trying to do just that. And just access the other points of meat. So you can see the leaves at the back moving around. Lots of wind that has just picked up. And the sky is all of a sudden covered in clouds. So I wonder what this means for us. It seems that a dust storm has just caught Brent. So let's go over there and see what that feels like. It seems that Brent has got the worst of the dust storm going around. We are still fairly protected by the bush and the termite mounds around us. And although the wind is visibly picking up, um, we're still not in the middle of the dust storm with dust upper our teeth like he said he was. We are still just enjoying this very beautiful sunset that Africa is giving us today with um, the lions feeding on a buffalo. The female has now started feeding as well and she's let some of the cubs move away and some of them are still tugging in there just because they are too greedy to let go because if you look at their stomachs they are looking pretty full. Although they do have to grow up to be super lions so they probably need all the meat that they can get. Kevin, you are wondering if the white lions of the Timbavati are a myth. Um, yes and no. So the white lions are just like normal lions. They're not a different species. They just have a recessive gene that makes them look a lot lighter in color. They can mate and live in prides with the tawny colored lions that we're looking at. Um, but they are very, very rare. So I'm not entirely sure of the dates, but I do know that up to the 1980s or so, I could be wrong, they were thought to be extinct in the wild. And uh, because they were thought to be extinct in the wild, but they still have some of them in captivity, what they started doing was releasing them back in the Timbavati, which is another big game reserve that's adjoining Kruger National Park. So I know that at the moment uh, there is a pride of lions, if I'm not mistaken, it's called the Ross Pride of Lions that has got a few individuals that are white. Um, they are, they have been mixing with some other lions in Kruger and there's another big, big uh, pride of lions close to the Labambo Mountains that has also got a few individuals that are white. So they are not a myth. They, they used to occur in this area, however, probably because of the color of their skin, they were more favored by hunters in certain areas because in the Timbavati you can still go for trophy hunting. So I'm not too sure what is the reason that drove them to extinction or in the wild at least, but uh, they are not a myth. They are real. Uh, they're just busy starting to reintroduce them now into the wild. Very rare. Haven't seen one, but hopefully one day. In the meantime,
time, these tiny lions that we are looking at hmm, are busy putting up a fight. So the two cubs that are still there definitely don't want to share. I wonder if they have eaten most of what's left of the backside of the buffalo because they're being very, very aggressive about it. But what is interesting though is the one female is here so she is obviously waiting and she's gonna start feeding soon and oh you can hear them fighting still. And the other one at the back is probably just also waiting to go in there and then just try, I'm sure they're gonna try to move the carcass and just get underneath where they still haven't been able to feed off. And there is another lioness at the back that we're looking at. Uh, there was another question earlier on about how lions get the blood and everything off their faces after they've eaten. Well, this is one of the ways they do it. They lick their paws and then they'll put them through their heads and, and they'll start almost like coming their faces with their clean paws. Sometimes they also do this because obviously in this area where they walk there are a lot of thorns, a lot of spines. Yes, little things that they need to try and get out, which is what I think she's doing now. And she's just trying to take whatever it is that is in between her toes or her pads and her toes, just trying to get it out of there because it's probably just uncomfortable. So you see, there she goes, getting very irritated, trying to take it out. This is, gives you a whole different meaning of being in each other's faces with this lion cub just pretty much almost sitting on top of the mom. Let's uh, head over to Brent who has got another lion of his own and see what this one over there is up to. We are still busy with the Enkahuma Pride of Lions and four of their cubs uh, busy feeding on the carcass right now. Well, actually, I think it might just be two of them feeding and one of them moving around because one of, or the three of them are just in between the two females that you guys can see right just to the left hand side. It seems, however, that the cubs have stopped feeding as the females have now moved a bit closer to the carcass. That one that's just at the back, she was lying down, she was busy grooming herself and slowly but surely she's starting to come this way which is not making that female to the left too happy. Every now and again she'll start growling so I'm sure it's to prevent the other females from coming and trying to feed off that particular part of the carcass for the time being. I think maybe what they've done is the cubs came in and they fed first and now that they're done, well, it seems that the adults want to come in and have their share of the meat. She is busy hiding her whole head on what's left of the back of the buffalo. And I think she's now telling off that cub that I think you can just see the back, probably just telling it that it's had enough, it's their turn now. It seems like the one cub is still at the back, still trying its luck with whatever is left on the other side. You can just see it through the gap there, uh, in between the bones of the pelvis of the buffalo. Oh, there he goes. There's a tiny little head there. On top of mom, as usual. And off it goes. Oh, you see she's got a nice big chunky part that she's trying to pull so she's just got to be slightly careful I have seen lion cubs before unfortunately when they try to feed on certain areas in between the bones the one got stuck uh, got its head stuck in between the bones and then couldn't get it out you could you, you know we felt sorry for it it eventually was fine but it was very very funny to watch how greedy it was <gasps> look at those two playing at the back 
the one just came running and fully tackled it. I'm sure they've got full bellies now, lots of energy. So they've just got to spend it somehow. <laughs> Look at that hug. Bernard, you would like to know if they will finish this whole buffalo. The case is normally so. So whenever uh, a big pride of lions like this one brings down a buffalo, they will finish it in maybe one or two days time, depending on how big the pride is. I would assume that they'll be here tomorrow morning, uh, could possibly even be here tomorrow afternoon, but they will surely finish it. Just want to have a look at the cubs playing there at the back in between the branches of the trees. They've just been stalking and jumping on top of each other just to try and see which one's stronger. Even from such a young age, playing like this plays such an important part of what they are going to become. They need to develop all of their hunting techniques, all their fighting skills and everything else. And what better way to start than with all of your siblings and cousins and relatives. Too bad that they've chosen the one spot behind the tree. Now there's a very faint sound coming from the females. They're just busy making contact calls, which is a very low call that they make just to communicate with the other pride, uh, pride members. So maybe she's just trying to see where the rest of the lionesses are or where the rest of the cubs are. Look at these two little troublemakers. They're being very brave and walking away from the rest of the pride. Hmm. Hopefully one of them will come and say hello to us. Oh, look at that. Still busy jumping around. I think that female is not going to tolerate a lot of nonsense from these cubs now that she's busy eating and her appetite is back. She is growling. Oh, well, she was growling at them before she decided to tell this one or put it back in its place. I think it didn't like it. Obviously not feeling too happy about it, but as cats do, it's just playing, playing it cool. Like that didn't happen. That was its intention all along. <laughs> oh, and the one at the back is just busy having a bath from its mother. Look at those paws going up. I'm sure he's not too happy. Whoop. No food for you. You've had enough. She is obviously not too happy that the cubs want to now go and eat at exactly the same spot where she is. You see, there she goes again. Oh, also telling another cub that he is not welcome there anymore. painted wolf you would like to know how many hyenas are needed to chase the lions it is quite a big pride of lions and we have two males around here and females that are going to be very aggressive to any potential predator that comes around the area not only because they would like to steal their kill but also because the cubs are at risk so I would reckon you would maybe need more than 10 hyenas or at least some 8 very, very brave grumpy hyenas to come around here and try to chase them off. Sometimes what could happen though is if there were just a few hyenas around and the females felt that it was unsafe for the cubs, even if they weren't too aggressive, they could potentially just prefer to leave the carcass, seeing they've eaten a lot of it, and just move off onto a safer area. But it is very hard to give an exact number on how many hyenas we would need just to chase them off the kill.
it seems like the little one in front got a fright from the face of the buffalo. You see, when we first started, they were so hot, just busy panting, barely moving around. And now that we have this nice weather, it's starting to get a bit darker. The appetite is back, they all want to play, and they're just a lot more active. Can't really blame them, the weather is much nicer now. He seemed to be looking just away from us and I hear branches every now and again and I wonder if it's just the, the trees or if there are potentially any elephants not too far away from here. Not to bother for the time being. You see that female on the left, she has now started to use her paws to try and create some tension and then just pull some of the meat out and also try and get the skin away from the meat. All right, it is getting a bit dark over here, so we don't want to spend too much time with the cubs as they're still very young and we want to just make sure that they are safe in the company of their mothers. So for today, I am actually going to say goodbye to everyone. It was great meeting you all and uh, well, I hope to see you guys soon and I hope you enjoy the drive just as much as I did. We'll go back to Brent and see if he has managed to survive the storm and the male lion. <laughs>